I became acquainted with my mentor this year in the early summer when I was uh, in Washington. I was attending a foster youth uh, uh, conference and I happened to run into him and tell my story and he's been guiding me on my path ever since. Uh, through With regards to setting up the Mayor of Jerusalem event, he uh, acquainted me with his uh, sort of chief of staff, a person who's very close to him. And ever since then, for the past month and a half, we've been uh, hammering the details on how this is going to go down, uh, what contingencies we should look out for. Um, and right now, as it stands, we are expecting a very big crowd for the Mayor of Jerusalem event. We're aiming to make as big of an impact as possible here at Yale. I read Wikipedia about half an hour ago to figure out uh, a lot of his policies, and I'm not sure I agree with all of them, so I'm really excited to hear him defend them, especially in terms of certain demolitions that he's planning and his decision to not march in the LGBT Pride Parade. I really want to see what his take is, just like how you are the mayor of Jerusalem, because like it's such a complicated city. There's so many different you know, ethnic groups, different religions, different histories just kind of coexisting, and so it's got to be a there's gonna be a lot of really complicated issues that arise and I really want to see how he like learned to deal with them over his course as mayor. It'll show people the nuances of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict because I think a lot of people kind of see it in a very black and white view and it's very much not. Uh, I think as Mayor Jerusalem, he's definitely uniquely qualified to talk about how complex and nuanced this whole you know, situation is. I've heard that people are concerned that it may spark violence by moving the embassy to the city of Jerusalem. Um, and my answer to that is, don't be concerned about it. Because if um, the Palestinians want to be violence, they don't need an excuse. 70 years of the existence of Israel, 50 years of the unity of the city of Jerusalem, we never touched, God forbid, any mosque or any church that are all there functioning. And so they don't need an excuse to create violence. And so my point is to the American administration, Please, you're our strategic partner, best friend in the world. You would practically recognize Jerusalem as a capital anyway. Uh, move in. What are some of the greatest challenges that you faced um, during your time as mayor? Thank you. Well, first of all, it's uh, articulating a clear vision and then creating strategies and tactics derived from the vision. That as an entrepreneur, I can develop and, 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 and create change to improve the economy, uh, to make the city more attractive for investors. It's, these are practical things that um, you look at the city as a city of 900,000 residents and how do we make quality of life better? So it's a very practical challenge, but it has to be aligned with a very clear vision. I want you to imagine a second. A city which is a destination for pilgrims from all over the world. And when they come to the gates of the city, the gates are open and inviting. There's no guest or host because the city does not belong to any specific tribe. It created all people friends. There's a famous biblical phrase that Jerusalem makes all people friends. 